Hey everybody. So, today is just a quick introduction to the Ballistic Pendulum Lab. Now, we're going to go ahead and conduct this lab next class, so I'm not going to collect any data on it, but I wanted to show you how it works, and then in a bit, we'll go through an example mathematically, so that when we do come in for the lab, you guys are fired up and ready to go. Now, what you have in front of you is the, the Ballistic Pendulum setup. Let's take a look. So I have my ballistic launcher right here, and this time instead of using the yellow spheres with less mass, we're instead going to use this steel ball bearing. We can find its mass easily using our electronic balancing class. Now I'm going to take that ball and I'm going to place it in the front of the launcher, and I'm going to move my pendulum out of the way. I think I'll just hold it with my other hand. And when I push that in, I go three clicks and I make sure it's sitting. And then my pendulum is going to be sitting flush like that. Now, when I pull the trigger, the ball is going to have a velocity as it enters into the ballistic pendulum. Now, I'd like to take a quick close-up of this. It, what you should notice, hopefully, is that that pendulum is full of styrofoam. And it's got a groove in it so that as the ball exits the chamber, it enters into the pendulum and lodges right about there. When that happens, an inelastic collision has occurred and momentum will be conserved. The momentum of the ball will have transferred to the momentum of the system, meaning both the pendulum when pendulum. now. That happens, this system will now have yeah, kinetic energy. Good. That kinetic energy, because it's attached to a string, what's it going to convert into? Potential energy. And what we should see is that our setup is going to swing. Now, what's cool about this, because again, the whole point of this lab is to find the velocity of the ball when it leaves the launcher. We should be able to work backwards and find the velocity of the ball. All right, so some of the things that we're going to do in this lab, let's see, in terms of data collection, I can take the mass of the ball. I can also take the mass of the pendulum. But here's the thing. I am not going to disconnect all of these strings. That's the classic mistake that adds 20 minutes to your lab. You can easily take that and just rest it upon the scale. Look at that. It's so easy. You disconnect the strings. Eh, not so easy. So that's the first thing I wanted to get out of the way. And the second thing is to show you what we're going to measure. So we're going to measure the length of those strings. Where did that meter stick go? No. Thanks, Mr. Crota. I can take that. And I'm going to measure from the pivot point down here up to the top, right where it, uh, right there, and measure that length. That is going to be the length of the string. Once it has moved and swung out sideways, that length of the string, oh, yeah, it's the same string, so it's the same length. Obvious. Thank you, Mr. Crota. Now, if I could, if you don't mind, do you mind coming on? coming over and pulling that trigger so we can show them what it looks like. Good. Thank you, Mr. Croto. Mr. Croto, your, your arm looks slightly weak today. Are you okay? Good, good. All right. Huh. All right. Are you ready? Let's pull that trigger. Let's see what's going to happen to the ballistic pendulum. Not bad. Thank you, Mr. Croto. Round of applause for Mr. Corda. Now, the thing is, measuring that change in height is going to be difficult. So what we are going to do is to measure its horizontal displacement. And I'm actually going to use the box that the setup came in. I'm going to first mark the zero point straight down from, oops, from where it's hanging. And I'm going to take my pencil right here and draw a line. That's my zero point. And I'm going to put the box over here, and I'm going to launch it off. 
three, four, seven, eight times? I'm not sure yet. Until I get that pendulum to just kiss that box. When it just kisses that box, I now know that that is the displacement in the x direction. I can measure that distance x. I know L. I can calculate the change in H. Why don't we take a look at how to do that? Thanks. All right, everybody. Let's take a look at the math. So I've already gone through how the ballistic pendulum setup is going to work. And we're going to conduct that experiment as a class next time. But just to make sure that you understand the math behind it. Uh, let me run through this quick handout that I put together. And uh, let's go from there. So the ballistic pendulum, just this time we're using a collision as well as energy. So you can imagine a long wire hanging down with a heavy mass on the end and a projectile coming in to hit it. Now, when the projectile collides with the block, if it sticks, an inelastic collision occurs. That is what is going to happen with the ballistic launcher. Now, what's beautiful about that is that we really have two sets of problems here. Our first thing that occurs is we have a collision. And using conservation of momentum, I can come up with a formula. Now, when I do that, I do not know the final velocity of the pendulum ball system. And I don't know the velocity of the ball to begin with. So I do have two unknowns. Fortunately for us, there's another part to this. After the collision, we can utilize conservation of energy to recognize this is like a physics Venn diagram. Do you see it? We can use conservation of energy because at the bottom, that system is going to be all in the form of kinetic energy, and then it's going to swing up. That's going to convert all into potential energy. The potential energy we should be able to measure. So let's take a look at how that works mathematically. Well, I'm going to come up with two different sides two different equations for the different sides of this problem. I have my conservation of momentum in an inelastic collision on the left and utilizing conservation of energy on the right. Now, what can sometimes be confusing is which V is which. Right here is going to be the initial velocity of the projectile. That is the goal. That's what we're trying to find. This final velocity is going to be the final velocity after the collision. Now, in my conservation of energy side, I am solving for this velocity here, which is from the kinetic energy at the bottom of the swing. That velocity right there is the final velocity after the collision. I can see it would be much clearer if I put a small f right here. And that velocity is the velocity after the collision. So if I can measure delta h, I can find the velocity after the collision. If I can find the velocity after the collision, I can work all the way back to the beginning and find the velocity of the projectile. So what's the big question? The big question is actually not the physics so much, but the measurement. And as I explained in the video, you're going to use the box in order, to, in order to measure delta x. Now, measuring delta x is actually the key. By knowing delta x and the length of the string, we can go and figure out the change in the height. So I feel like the video did a decent enough job explaining what's going to happen there. I think what I would like to do instead is to focus on this picture here. Because this is actually showing the position before and after the collision. Or I guess this would be after the collision at the bottom and after it has swung upwards. Yeah. So, taking a look at that, the length of the string L, this doesn't change. So we could measure this when it was at rest and then it becomes the hypotenuse. Now, if we measure delta x, we now have two sides of a right triangle. And I measure delta x, I now have two sides 
of a right triangle. And this is what's a little bit confusing. What we're going to do with L and delta X is we're actually going to solve for this value that I have labeled H, this side of the triangle. That's just Pythagorean theorem. Come on, piece of cake for you guys. But if I know H, watch what happens. If I take this full length, L, right here, and subtract my value. For, oh, I know you already see it, don't you? And I subtract H. What am I left with? Of course, delta H. And that's what I need in order to find the potential energy, the velocity after the collision, and finally, the velocity Look at how to do that. after the projectile. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mr. Croto. Round of applause. Oh, I already gave you a round of applause. You want to take a bow? Ha, 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 ha.